Hey what's up everyone welcome back to lead coding in this video we'll be solving the question number three of lead code weekly contest 221 we have already uploaded the solution to the problem number two you can find the link in the description so now let's move forward and try to solve this one so you are given a 2d grid of size m cross n representing a box and you have n balls the box is open at the top and at the bottom each cell has a diagonal board spanning two corners of the cell that can direct the ball to the right or to the left so basically uh, if it is given as 1 then it is going to redirect the ball to the right side and if it is given as minus 1 then it is going to redirect the ball to the left side now we drop n balls corresponding to each column we are going to drop one ball and we have to tell that if that ball can reach till the end we can see the example here so let us talk about the green one first it is going to go right then again it is going to go right and then here it will get stuck because of this another line that is coming so now it will not have any path to go further down similarly the brown ball is going to stuck at the same place the blue and the purple ball are going to stuck at the same place over here the red ball is going to pass so first of all it's going to right then right then left then right and then left and it will reach till the bottom now what we have to return is a vector of size n where answer of i represents the column at which the ith ball is going to land so this uh, red ball it is going to come out from the column number one so the answer for zero will be one and for all the other for all the other indices the answer will be minus one as these balls are never going to reach till the bottom so this is what we have to do let us go and try to solve this problem all right so let us talk about the red ball okay so this is the matrix corresponding to this diagram we can see there's a path from there's a path going to the right it is going to redirect the ball to the right side and it is denoted as one in this cell also there's a path which is going to redirect the ball to the right side and it is denoted as one similarly there are ones and minus ones all over this matrix now what we have to do is we have to devise an algorithm so that we can tell that uh, where are we going to reach so let us say we are here we are talking about the red ball if the number at this position is minus one then it will be something like this so this is going to be a deadlock for this red ball because this line and this boundary is going to hold the red ball over here and it is not going to let the ball go down okay but that is not the case here the line is from left to the right and that is why the ball can go down but then if we look at the cell adjacent to this that is this cell if there was a line from right to the left like this then it would have hold the red ball at this position so the red ball will get stuck at this position so in order to pass the red ball through this way this cell has to be from left to right as well that is the value at this cell has to be 1 and it is 1 in this case that is the reason why this ball is coming at this position so now it is going to come here at this position and we will see again that there is a path from left to right again if there is a path from left to right and on the cell which is adjacent to this if there is a path from right to left then again it is going to hold the ball but then we can see that the path is from left to right again and so the ball will come to this place so here we can see that there's a path from right to left so now if there's a line from left to right here then it will hold the ball and it will not let the ball go through this but we can see that there's a path from right to left that is why the ball will go down and will come here so if we are at a certain index and if the value is minus one we will go left only if the index which is adjacent to this the previous index is the same as this one so if it is minus one then only it is going to go to the left side if it is minus one and if it is one then in this case the ball is going to get stuck because it will be something like this and the ball will get stuck at this position and if there's a one let's say for this position if there's a one so we'll have to look to the index which is next to this if this index is also one 
then there will be a path like this and the ball can flow through this and if it is minus one then there will be a path like this and it is going to hold the ball so whenever we are at a certain position if the index is one we will have to look at the next index if it is minus one then we will have to look to the previous index and according to that we will either go down or we will get stuck at that position so we can understand it better once we code this so first of all I'm going to make M as the grid dot size let us name it as G so this is my number of rows and M is the number of columns so this is G0 dot size now we are creating an answer it will be a vector of type int and it will be of size n we are initializing it with minus one because on all those position for all those indices for which the ball is never going to go down we will have to return minus one that's why we are keeping minus one here now we'll go to each of the ball one by one so i is equal to zero i is smaller than n i plus plus we are going to each of the column for each ball now we are starting with this is my x my x is going to denote the uh, the column so my x is equal to i and I'm keeping another variable y which is going to be my row so it is going to be 0 of course because we are starting from the top now we can run a while loop while y is smaller than m basically m is the total number of rows while we are not reaching down we are going to run this loop if g of so here it is y comma x if this is equal to minus one then in this case if it is equal to minus one we are going to go left and for that we'll have to check the index we will have to check the index previous to this so if x is either it is equal to zero if it is equal to zero we cannot go down or the value at this index that is y comma x minus one if this is equal to one in this case I cannot go down so I will just break out of this loop otherwise I will go to the left side so that will make my x as x minus minus and y plus plus we are going down one step and to the left side one step otherwise we are going to do the opposite of this so if x is equal to m minus one if it is that then if it is the case that there's a one there's a one so the path is this and if the x that is the column is m minus one the last column so it is going to get stuck because of this boundary so in that case it will get stuck or if y and x plus one if this is equal to minus one then also it will get stuck and we are going to break out this loop why I'm breaking out that I will explain in a moment now otherwise if it is safe then we will go to x plus plus and y plus plus we are going down one step and to the right one step now after exiting out of this loop we can either exit out of this loop if we reach till the end or we can exit through this break condition so if we reach till the end by the exit condition of this while loop that means we reach till the end we will check it so if y is equal to m we are at the bottom now we can change the answer so answer for this i is going to be equal to x where x is the column through which it is coming out and this is the answer for the ith index otherwise we don't have to do anything because we are already storing minus one at all the positions now we can return our answer this some compilation error this should be n I guess it is giving us correct answer for this test case let us submit it now there's some runtime error let us try to figure it out here it should be n instead of this m because we are looking at the column alright so let us try to submit it now and it got accepted so talking about the extra space we are just using this much extra space to store the answer and about the time complexity so for each of the ball we are going to each of the row 
and there are n number of balls and m number of rows so the time complexity is m into n both of these are given as 100 so the overall time complexity is going to be 10 raised to the power 4 do subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out to our future content and press the bell icon so that you can get notifications to our future videos thank you